you recall many times I have in the since this was released about three or four years ago, and I just I we were I was going through presidential libraries looking for audio clips you know to do on the show, and I went through the LBJ library and they had just released a whole bunch of new tape. And I listened to this thing, and I'm like, why is this not on the front page of the New York Times? It just blew my mind. It was Richard Nixon. Excuse me. It was Lyndon Johnson. It was the LBJ libraries. It was Lyndon Johnson in the fall of 1968. Now, 1968 was the year that the, you know, the Vietnam War was going full tilt boogie. Johnson was not running for re-election. His vice president, Hubert Humphrey, was running to be president of the United States against Richard Nixon, who had lost in 1960 to Kennedy, who had been vice president from 52 to 1960 under Eisenhower, had lost to Kennedy in 60 and had come back for a comeback try the way that I think Mitt Romney's going to in 68. And Nixon discovered that LBJ had actually negotiated peace with the South Vietnamese. And he had to blow this up because Nixon, because LBJ was going to drop this bomb on the American people in September or October of 68. And Hubert Humphrey was going to look like a hero. He was part of the administration that had brought peace to Vietnam. And Nixon had to put an end to it. And so Nixon's uh, campaign people, John Mitchell were, you know, and, and buddies working out of uh, New Mexico, called up uh, Madame Tu and others in South Vietnam and said, We'll give you a better deal if you just hold off. Don't go to the Paris peace talks. Don't cut a deal with LBJ. In fact, here's the clip of Lyndon Johnson talking to Everett Dirksen, who was the leader of the Republicans in the United States Senate and a very close friend of Lyndon Johnson's. These two guys were probably the two most powerful men in America for many, many years. Everett Dirksen, a genuine statesman who led the Democrats or the Republicans, uh, Lyndon Johnson, a, arguably a, a, a statesman, certainly a very effective politician who led the Democrats. Um, the two of them talking about, uh, uh, this is basically LBJ asking Everett Dirksen to get control of Nixon, because Nixon's blowing up this peace deal, and it's going to mean that another 20,000 U.S. soldiers are going to die or more, and it's going to mean that a million, another million Vietnamese are going to die if Nixon is successful in blowing this deal up. Don't let him do it. Here's the conversation. Here's the latest, latest uh, information we got. The agent says that uh, she's just, they just talked to the boss in New Mexico. Uh -huh. And that he says that you must hold out. Just hold on until after the election. We know what you is saying to them out there. Yeah. We're pretty well informed on both ends. Now, I'm reading their hand, Everett. I don't want to get this in the campaign. That's right. And they oughtn't to be doing this. This is treason. I know. This is treason. I know. Okay, so, interestingly, you know, I've been, I've been like, this, like this lone voice out here for three years, playing this tape for you over and over and over again. Of uh, you know, and there's several others that go along with it, where he's talking to other various you know politi politicians and a couple of follow-up conversations with Everett Dirksen, and then there's one where Nixon calls him back and says, "Oh, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. I would never do that. Me? No, <laughs> no way. No, I'm not a crook." Now comes a new book. This is uh, in one of ten oral histories. I'm reading an article by John Aloysius Farrell, published over at uh, Information Clearinghouse from uh, World New uh, the Information Clearinghouse info. The headline is "Yes, Nixon scuttled the Vietnam peace talks." It's been rumored for years. Now we have real proof. Tom Charles Houston, the author of a comprehensive, still secret report he prepared as a White House aide to Nixon. In one of ten oral histories conducted by the National Archives and opened last week. This was in June 10th. This was a couple weeks ago. Houston says there is no question that Nixon campaign aides sent a message to the South Vietnamese government promising better terms if they obstructed the talks and helped Nixon get elected. Nixon's campaign manager, John Mitchell, quote, was directly involved, end quote, Houston tells interviewer Timothy Naftali. And while there is no evidence that I found that Nixon participated, it is, quote, inconceivable to me, says Huston, that Mitchell acted on his own initiative. 
This was transcribed and published on the website of the Richard Nixon Presidential Library a week ago Wednesday. Is a, a tale that features a secret X file, a mysterious dragon lady, and reports of wiretaps and bugging. It's uh, really remarkable. Apparently, it was Anna Chenault, the Republican activist with ties to the South Vietnamese government, who sent the word to Saigon when, when LBJ is saying our agent is telling us it was the CIA who intercepted the conversation. Wait until the book comes out. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. But, you know, hey, uh, Nixon did it with Vietnam. Ronald Reagan did it with the hostages in Iran. And then we gave all those weapons to Iran. And, you know, Bush had his own problems.